Welcome to Strip Coverlet, I'm Adrian Fort, and we are here for the seventh in a 29 part series as we journey chapter by chapter through. This is not a writing manual by Carrie Majors. This, the seventh part, is entitled My First Big Mistake, and it is over pages 37 through 43. This chapter is largely a pep talk. And I'm not going to give you Carrie Major's pep talk because that belongs to Carrie Major's and it's sort of hokey. So I'll give you a pep talk of my own, but it will have the same core message. Uh, and I'll start in, in, in the very same place. That place namely being, you're not special. You're not special. Take a deep breath. Let it out. Now isn't that a relief? You are not special, so you get to be anything you decide uh, to work at. Think of special. The most, one of the most extreme cases of special, of basically being born to do something, is Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal was special. Shaquille O'Neal was born to play basketball. And no matter how hard he tried, Shaquille O'Neal was never, ever, 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 ever a going to be a horse jockey. What's going to happen? He was special. He was born to play basketball. You're not special. Hooray. But you are unique. The most wonderful thing about Tigger is Tigger's the only one. Um, you were the only you. So what is the difference between special and unique and why does it matter? Being special is rigid. Shaq was going to play basketball, but he was never going to sink a three and he was never going to dunk from the free throw line. Hell, the guy could barely even make a free throw. So special is rigid even inside the category that someone is special for. Shaquille O'Neal was very limited on the basketball court, but he was elite at what he did. Um, but being unique is liquid, especially as a writer. Say there is another person born into a Shaq-like body. Another person is born into Shaquille O'Neal's body tomorrow. That guy is going to play college basketball. That guy is going to get a free education. Without working, that guy can be 40% Shaq, and 40% Shaq gets a free education at some level. No one can work to be you. People can work at being close to you. People can work at things that you do. People can work at things that you are strong at. People can work at your strengths and at diminishing the weaknesses that you have gotten away from. But no one can be you. Therein lies the rub, I. To be fully you, you have to work at it. You have to find where the edges are. You have to find the peaks, the valleys. You have to find the troughs. You have to find the cool breeze that makes you, you, that complements you. Once you figure out those things and you start working at them, the uniqueness can become refined. Once uniqueness becomes refined, it starts to feel special from the outside looking in. Uh, I use the example of Hemingway way too much on this channel, and I understand that, but it is perfect here. Hemingway wrote short stories and worked intently at found, finding out how much you could strip away and retain the entire story. That's Hemingway was spare with his words to begin with. And once he identified that as one of his strengths, one of the things that he enjoyed, one of the things that he liked, one of the things that made him him, uh, he worked at it. And he would strip away more and more elements to a story until he had just what was necessary to make a story work. Uh, for example, there is the uh, the story that is off the six word story that is often attributed to Hemingway, which is probably largely uh, an urban legend. For sale, baby shoes never worn. In this, we have the essence of an entire story with six words. These six words take us on an emotional roller coaster. For sale, 
Okay, someone doesn't want something. Baby shoes. Okay, this person's baby is grown up. Never worn. Oh. We have a twist. A twist at the end. In a six-word story. All of a sudden, after all that work of figuring out just how much you can tear away from a story and let that story remain a story and the story that you're telling, Hemingway's work ends up feeling special. But it was not special, it was just unique. So, to common perception, or in the mind's eye, Horatio, specialness equals uniqueness plus refinement. This is a formula for something that feels special. And feeling special is all you have to really get to. And feeling special is something that we can work to do. I can't wake up tomorrow in Shaq's body and play basketball. Just can't do it. But through work, I can make something which is unique uh, into something which feels special. And not, not that I'm anywhere near this level, but I can share with you uh, personal examples or, or, or how I know that a short story idea that I have is an Adrian Fort short story. If I'm at work and, and the idea that I have is so shit-eating or so underhand that I can't stop myself from laughing out loud at the thought of it, I know that's an Adrian Fort short story and I have to write it. If the idea that I have is not to that level, I know that there's still something clicking that shouldn't be. Something clicking that should be running smoothly to make me laugh. And all I have to do is take whatever scenario, whatever situation that I have, and work at it until it, it makes me laugh in that way. And then it's an Adrian Fort short story. And I will leave you from this pep talk uh, with a quote from Chris Cornell, this being from the audio slave song, Be Yourself. Someone falls to pieces, sleeping all alone. Someone kills the pain. Spinning in the silence, she finally drifts away. Someone gets excited in a chapel yard, catches a bouquet. Another lays a dozen white roses on a grave. And to be yourself is all that you can do. That's it for this episode of Strip Cover Lit. This being the 7th and a 29 part series as we journey chapter by chapter through. This is not a writing manual by Carrie Majors and this chapter was titled My First Big Mistake. If you like this sort of thing, uh, I would appreciate a like below. Uh, jump into the comments with how you know a short story or a poem or a novel idea is a very you idea and when it is that you know and understand that you have to pursue that story. I'm interested to see how how different people relate to these things and I look forward to seeing you in the next installment of This Is Not a Writing Manual from Carrie Majors which is entitled Come At It From The Side.